This video is sponsored by Guitar World. Hey, Steve Stein here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the Blackstar ID Core version three amplifier. Now this new amplifier from Blackstar comes in a 10, 20, and a 40 watt version. I have the 40 watt version with me today. Now all three of these amplifiers come with stereo, dual speakers. The 10 watt version comes with two 3 inch speakers, and the 20 watt comes with two 5 inch speakers, and the 40 watt that I'm using comes with two 6 and a half inch speakers. Now what makes this new model really, really cool is there's a molded handle for easy carrying on the back of this. The old one used to have a strap, but this one is much easier to carry. There's also a new live streaming feature where you can record yourself playing with the TRRS input. Now none of these amps have Bluetooth, although you still can plug your mobile device into these amps, and you can also use the USB to connect it directly to a computer. There's also a cab rig headphones output, which is what I'm actually using for this video right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into some of the sounds that this amplifier makes, and then we'll deep dive a little bit more and see some of the other things that are happening. So the first thing we're gonna look at here as we go to the amplifier itself, you can see I'm using uh, a cable, I'm coming out of the headphone output here, and of course going into the input. And then let's take a look here at the options that we have for tones, okay? We have a clean warm, we have a clean bright, we have a crunch, a super crunch, and an overdrive one and an overdrive two. Now we're gonna listen to all of those, but let's just look at and, and kind of describe what they are. So the clean warm, straightforward clean tone. The clean bright, for me, it seems like it gives a little more boost to the low and the high end, and with this particular guitar, it sounds quite nice. Uh, the crunch, of course, the super crunch just has a little bit higher gain, and then of course you move into the overdrive one and overdrive two. It seems to me the difference between the two, the overdrive two has a bit more mid boost, but again, we're gonna look at that. Okay, next up we've got the gain control, and then next to that we've got the volume control, and then next to that we've got the EQ, or the ISF control is what they call it. Now this isn't really just an EQ in the traditional sense. The ISF, which stands for Infinite Shape Feature, sort of changes the tone from a more British sound to an American sound. So if you roll this thing clockwise, you're gonna get more of a British sound, and if you roll it back counterclockwise, you're gonna get more of an American style amp tone. Now. When we deep dive and we look a little bit into the software, the Architect software, you can tweak the EQ as you like, but this just makes it kind of simple to, uh, to quickly kind of sweep that EQ, and again, we're gonna do that in just a second. Now we have three different banks of effects. We have modulation, delay, and reverb, and each one of those gets four different types. So let's take a look at the amp here. So to engage modulation, all we do is push this button. If we want to engage the delay, we have it here. And if we want to engage the reverb, we have that here, okay? We can see with this button right here, we can turn this and get four different styles of each one. And then we have a level for each one as well. So the modulation, if we go back to that, I'm gonna turn these off. Let me just kind of show you this as well. When you enable one of these, it turns green. And that means now I can edit this as needed, however I want. And then if I want to, for instance, enable delay, I can click that, and now both the modulation and the delay are on, but you can see that the delay is green. That means that's now in edit mode, so I can edit as needed. Then I can head down here and I can turn on reverb and have all three of them on, okay? But now the reverb is green, which means I can edit the reverb as needed. And again, we're gonna hear some of this. If I decided I wanted reverb and delay, but I didn't want modulation, I just go back to this button, I can turn it off, and now here we are with those two back on, and I can choose whichever one it is I want to edit at that moment in time. So if we go back to the modulation here, I'm gonna turn this one off and turn this one off. The modulation has four different types. There's the phaser, the chorus, the uh, flange, envelope, and tremolo, and we're gonna hear those, okay? If we go to the delay version here, we have linear, analog, tape, and multi. And if we go down to the uh, reverb, we have the room, the hall, the plate, and then we have, or spring, excuse me, and then plate reverb. So there's a lot of stuff in there that we can use and we can edit those as needed. And again, we can deep dive with the software and edit even further if we choose to. There's also a tap tempo here where we can tap out the delay if we choose to. 
Now, one thing I do want to point out, which is really important for me with an amplifier, is having a noise gate, especially when I'm on the higher gain channels. Now, you're not going to see a noise gate on here with the controls. The noise gate is actually in there, okay? But you're going to uh, access it by going to the Architect software. That's where you're going to be able to tweak that noise gate as needed. All right, an amp like this, I have a tendency of using a lot for practices. Um, I don't really do a lot of recording with it, although obviously you can. It has a USB out that you can use, or you can use what I'm using right now, running the headphone out into my uh, DAW. But what I tend to do is I use it a lot for practices and um, at home, and then I also use it a lot for simple rehearsals. Like I play at church, and I play in a very small church, and I don't need a big amplifier or anything like that. An amp like this is absolutely perfect for that. Or if I get together with some friends and we're just kind of doing some jamming, but again, it isn't a full-on big drum kit style jam. These Now again, it's not that it doesn't have the volume for it, I'm just telling you what I use it for. And so it works great for those kind of rehearsals or those kind of practices as well, just simple jams like that. But it really does work incredible for um, for me, for church and things like that, where I can run the foot switch, which I don't have the foot switch for this yet. Um, but that's what makes this really nice is, be nice is being able to use that foot switch to be able to switch between a clean channel and a bit more of a crunch channel or something. So I, uh, I do need to purchase one of those. And this does have uh, accessibility to that, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and just dial in some sound. So I'm on the, the clean warm right now, okay? And what I wanna focus on here is just kind of dialing in a simple sound. Now I'm all the way up on my neck position on this guitar. And you can see I just have all of these set at just about 50%. I don't have any effects or anything like that. Now for me, what I would have a tendency to do is I, I might drop down that gain and turn up the volume. Now, the first thing I wanna show you is this EQ or ISF sound. So I'm gonna go all the way over to the American. Now, you should be able to notice a little bit of difference and when we get into the higher gains, you're really gonna notice that as well. Now, I just tend to run that, again, it depends, but usually I'll run that thing around, you know, 15, 20, 30%, something like that. Toward the American side with a little bit of that British in there. But everybody's different that way. So that sounds pretty good to me. Now let's bring in some effects. So what I'm gonna do is let's just first dial in some reverb here. Now, if you can see this, just like uh, other amps, certainly in the Black Star line, as I turn it further over, right before it switches to the next sound, I'm gonna get a little more of whatever the effect uh, I'm dialing in at that point. So let me turn that all the way up so you can hear this. See that? Now let me go to the next one. So you can hear a lot more of that right before it changes over. Okay. So I'm gonna head back to the spring. That's what I tend to use is either a spring or a plate, but I'm just gonna use that spring for reverb. Let's just listen to some of these different reverbs. Okay. Up here into our and then moving into the the plate reverb there. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the jump up. I'm gonna turn this off. 
And we're gonna make the jump up into the next one here, okay, which is the bright. Make sure I'm not clipping it all there. Okay, so that already works quite nice for me as far as the sound goes. So now let's take a look at the next effect here. We're gonna go into the delay. Turn that up about halfway just to get started here. So there's our linear delay. Now we can slow this down if we want to. Should be a little more of something that I would use, okay? So it's gonna to move to the analog here. And then moving finally to the multi, the tap there. Maybe a little much. But hey, just finding what works for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and move up again. We're gonna move into the crunch this time, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back that volume a little bit. Especially so I don't clip at all there, and I'm going to turn off the, the effects. So with that crunch, there'd be a little bit of gain. And a lot of gain. Back that off. So now let's take a look at that ISF. So you might notice that a lot more now that we've got some gain riding through there. So quite simply what I would do is dial in a little reverb, little delay. Let's go back to the reverb for a second. Yeah, that's okay. Little delay. Okay, maybe a little more gain, but it's really a crunch channel, so I don't know how much I would really need. Maybe uh, change my pickup selection. So I can get that kind of sound. Okay, let's bump it up again. This time we're moving up into the super crunch. And I'm just gonna move back and forth between these so you can hear this. Seems a bit more scooped.
Okay, and then moving into overdrive one. Heavying up a bit there, scooping a bit. And then moving on to overdrive two. Now, to be honest with you, with the rehearsals that I've used this in, I really never leave the super crunch or the crunch for the most part, because what I have a tendency to do, let's say I, I set it on, you know, well, let's just go to super crunch, that's fine. You know, I might just roll my volume back. Uh, let's even go to just regular crunch. You know, that'd make for a really nice tone there. So it's not completely clean, but I can clean it up a lot by going to uh, my neck position and rolling my volume back. And then if I need more, I can always drop this down and then drop into that if needed. And of course, once I get the foot switch, that'll change as well. But anyway, that gives you kind of an idea. I don't use a lot of modulation, um, but we can certainly take a look at that. So let's just drop back here. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up, bring this back. Let's take those off. So this is our phaser. Moving into our chorus flanger. Okay, and then moving into the envelope. Okay, and then finally moving into the tremolo. I've never tried this, but yeah, we can speed that up like that. That's kind of cool. Okay, not really an effect that I use, but it certainly sounds kind of cool. Now remember, there is a USB mini jack output to connect to the Architect software uh, if you choose to, or to your DAW or whatever, but you have to understand that it is a USB mini jack. Um, I used to see those sometimes on certain phones and things like that. It's not a USB-C or anything like that, so you have to make sure that you have the right cable. As well as, if you remember, if you're going to do streaming and things like that, you need a TRRS cable, which is not a TRS. It has two uh, circles on it, so you need to make sure that you have the right cables for those. It's a three-ring cable. Also, the foot switch that you get with this, uh, if you choose to get that, is called an FS18 foot switch. They have an older foot switch, which I think still works with it. I'm not completely sure. Maybe somebody can, can comment on that, but I know the FS18 foot switch works. I just don't have that right now. All right, so now we're going to look at the Architect software that you get with the uh, Blackstar ID Core version 3. Now, this software is going to work with older versions of the ID Core. So if you do have, you know, the version 2 or something like that, this software will still work with that. But this version 3 comes with what's called a cab rig, and it's specifically called cab rig light. And that only works with version 3. So if you have an older version of ID Core, it's not going to work with that. Okay. And right now, with that cab rig that you're going to see in just a little bit, you can't load your own IRs at the moment, your own impulse responses. But I'm wondering with the word light, if they, they've got a larger version coming out at some point in the future, uh, maybe it's an add-on purchase or something like that where you can get a bunch of other ones, or maybe you add your own uh, you know, IRs or something like that. But it's a pretty cool feature. We're going to look at that. All right, so now we're looking at the Architect software itself, and we can see that there are some buttons here that 
correlate with the amplifier itself. For instance, there's the voice button right there on the upper left. We can see we've got our clean, warm, clean, bright, all of those things available to us. And then we've got the gain and the volume just like the amp does. But then we've got a three band EQ that was not available on the amp, just to save space, I'm sure. So now what we can do is with this Architect software, we can adjust the bass and middle and treble as we see fit. And then we've got the ISF uh, knob there, just like the, the uh, amplifier does. But then we've got a resonance and a presence control. Okay, we've got both of those sitting right there that we can adjust that are not on the amp. And again, I'm sure these aren't on there just to save some space on the amp itself to make it as small as it is. Then if we go down below, we see we've got a tuner. Okay, now this allows you to tune any way you like. The tuner that's built onto the amp itself is just a very simple tuner to, if you're a little sharp or a little flat, you're not gonna tune to a drop C or something like that with that tuner. But with this tuner, we can actually have a, a readout and things like that and we can tune a bit more deep. And then there it is, we've got our noise gate, which I find very, very important. Okay, and we've got it listed right there. So we can adjust the noise gate for each one of the voices. We can see we've got clean, uh, warm, clean, bright, all of those things. So you can just turn that on and adjust the noise gate as needed. We also have the uh, modulation and the delay and the reverb. We can adjust those as needed. They look like pedals, obviously, to make it a little bit easier. And then you move over to the right and that's where your cab rig exists, okay? So basically the cab rig light is a next generation speaker simulator that reproduces the sound of and feel of a mic'd up guitar amp. So basically what you can do with that uh, mic is you can adjust its angle Okay, you have a number of different microphones to choose from and, um, and then you have a number of different cabs to choose from as well. And I'm going to list those below in the description so you can see everything that's available. One important note before we're done is I really want you to understand that you don't need that software to be able to utilize this amp effectively. It's just if you need to deep dive and change the tones a little bit. And for me, with these little practice amps, I just don't really use the software that much. But who knows, you might find it absolutely invaluable. Uh, the other thing is, is that it's got the foot switch capability, which is really important to me. And it also has the streaming feature. Now, I haven't tried the streaming feature, but from what I understand is, of course, if you plug or if you connect it to your phone, you'd be able to stream directly out to Facebook or whatever, playing your guitar. But when you do that, you're not going to be able to talk at the same time. The the um, phone isn't going to, you know, pick up your, your voice or something like that. So just, just so you're aware of that. But it is a really cool feature if you just want to go live somewhere and jam for a a while or something like that. And the other thing that I haven't mentioned is that there is an availability of what's called the PB1, which is a power bank uh, that enables you to be able to play, you know, let's say you're, you do a lot of busking or something like that, you could go without any power. You could simply plug it into your phone and go play somewhere and use that power bank and you would need to plug this you know, into an outlet or something like that to draw your power, which is pretty darn cool. So hopefully that helps you a little bit more in better understanding this new amp from Blackstar. And I want to say thank you so much to Guitar World and to Blackstar for allowing me to make this demo, let you check it out a little bit and see if it's something that you might be interested in. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.